Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at the concept of time constant for capacitance in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson we're going to understand how to quantify a discharging and charging capacitor. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson we can represent the charging and discharging of capacitors through resistors graphically, calculate the values for current potential difference and charge for a discharging capacitor and calculate the time constant for a charging or discharging capacitor, which falls into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.7.4.4, capacitor charge and discharge. Now, in previous lessons, we measured the charging of a capacitor in an electrical circuit. So here, the power pack is providing the EMF to charge the capacitor, and we can measure the potential difference and the time in the circuit. Now, in previous lessons, when we plotted these measurements, we found the following graph was formed. Now this shows us that the potential difference increases okay, when the capacitor is being charged, but the rate of change decreases with respect to time to the charging process. So this process is an example of exponential decay. The rate of change, in this case increase, decreases over time. Now since potential difference is proportional to charge, as charge builds up, so does potential difference. The maximum value of potential difference is reached is at when it's equal to the terminal PD of the battery. So when the capacitor has reached the maximum potential difference, we refer to this as V0. Now, once again, remember that this process of charging is an example of exponential decay. The rate of change decreases with time. So here, the uh, maximum potential difference which you can achieve on a capacitor is the EMF of the power supply, which we call V0. Now, this exponential pattern is also true if we measure the charging the circuit instead of potential difference. As for a capacitor, because the capacitance is fixed, charge and potential difference are directly proportional. Now the charge stored by a capacitor increases with every electron that moves to the negative plate. So the amount of charge increases quickly at the beginning because a large current is flowing. Now as the current drops, the rate in which the charge increases also drops, so you get a maximum charge. So once again, this is an example of exponential decay. The rate of increase decreases over time. Now again you can find a maximum charge which we call Q0. Now we can also have a look at as if we measure current instead of charge or potential difference. However we've got to remember that the current is measured in the circuit not through the capacitor. So as a result it still follows an exponential pattern however this exponential pattern is in the opposite direction to that of charge and potential difference because as more charge is stored on the capacitor, there is less current available in the circuit to be measured. Now eventually, as the number <coughs> of electrons has been placed on the plate, okay, no more charge can move onto the plate, so therefore there's no more movement of charge in the circuit. This makes the current drop to zero. So when the ammeter in the circuit reaches zero, you know a capacitor is fully charged. So it's important to know that when the ammeter in the circuit reaches zero, the capacitor is fully charged, which in reality is a better measure of knowing when a capacitor is charged, since the capacitor will, in, in, in the real world, never get to the EMF of the power supply as its potential difference due to internal resistance will not be the same as the EMF of the power supply. <coughs> so again, this process okay, of, of current change with time is an exponential decay because the rate of change decreases with time. Now, we can denote this as following, so you'll notice that the maximum value of current is I0, which occurs at the start of the charging process. <clears throat> so the charging process is dependent on the capacitance of the capacitor and the resistance of the circuit. So the charging process is an exponential process, and we can use these ideas to determine the formulae of the capacitor charging. So as a result, because it's an exponential process, for potential difference we can work out how much the potential difference will change uh, with respect to time in the charging process, and that is V equals V0, which is the maximum potential difference, times by 1 minus minus e to the power minus t over rc. Now the e term is needed in this equation as it's an exponential process. Now just to note, that's because the change of increase is decreasing at the same rate each time. Now e is called Euler's number and represents exponential change. And this value equals 2.718 and is found on your calculator. 
Now, again, you can do this for charge and say Q equals Q0 times by 1 minus E to the power minus T over RC. Now, the equation refers to the charge found on the capacitor plates, not the charge of the circuit. And again, for current, I equals I0 E to the minus T over RC. Now, in previous lessons, we've also looked at how to measure the discharge of a capacitor in an electrical circuit. Now, the, the capacitor can discharge when the power pack is switched off, and you can measure this with potential difference in, in, in time. So, in previous lessons, when we measure the char discharge of a capacitor in an electrical circuit, when the switch is moved to a, a open position, the electrons on the negative plate repel each other and move back into the circuit. Eventually, both plates lose their charge and the electrical field between between them disappears. So to start the discharging process, you remove the EMF from the circuit and close the switch to complete that circuit. So this process is an example of exponential decay. The rate of change in this instance decrease also decreases over time. Now, as V0 is the maximum possible potential difference, this occurs at the start of the discharging process. Now, the discharging process happens the fastest with the greatest potential difference across the plates. So therefore, because this is at the start of the discharging process, this indicates to us that the discharging process occurs fastest at the start of the discharging situation. Now, this is also when the potential difference across the resistor in the circuit is the smallest, since the circuit's a potential divider. So if the potential difference is the largest in the capacitor, it's in the smallest in the resistor, which is connected in series in the circuit. Now, the same exponential discharge curve will be found if the current was being measured also. Now, as I0 is the largest possible value, this occurs at the start of the discharging process. So there's initially a large current as the electrons leave that negative plate, and the current is flowing in the opposite direction from the charging current. Now, as the number of electrons on the negative plate falls, so so does the size of the repulsive electrostatic force. This makes the current fall at a slower rate, as it's more, it is more difficult for the electrons to leave the plate. And then eventually, when no more electrons move in the circuit, the current drops to zero. Now again, this is a process of exponential decay, because the rate of change decreases over time. Now when no more electrons move in the circuit, the current drops to zero, so we can say that the capacitor is fully discharged. So an easy way to work out whether your capacitor is fully discharged is having your ammeter value drop to zero in the circuit. Now the same discharge exponential curve will be found if charge is being me measured. Now again, as Q0 is the largest possible value, this occurs at the start of the discharging process. Now the charge that was stored on the plates now falls with every electron that leaves the negative plates. The charge falls quickly initially and then slows, eventually reaching zero when all the charges left the plate. And again, this is a, pro a pr example of exponential decay as the rate of change decreases with time. So we can use these ideas to determine the formulae of the capacitor discharging. So as a result, the equation to show the potential difference across the capacitor after a certain time of discharge is equal to V, is equal to V0, which is the maximum potential difference, times by E to the power minus T over RC. Now once again, the E term is needed in the equation as it's an exponential process, and this process is an exponential decay as the change of decrease is decreasing increasing each time. Now again, E is Euler's number and represents the exponential change. Now again, the equation for charge is very similar. It's Q equals Q0 E to the power minus T over RC. And again, this equation refers to the charge found on the capacitor plates, not the charge of the circuit. Now also we can do this for current and say current is equal to I equals I0 E to the minus T over RC. Now, it's common in examination questions to be asked to find the time value from these equations, and you've got to be confident in rearranging this equation. So what you would do is in the first step is you'd collate the charge terms to one side of the equation. So we'd say Q over Q0 is equal to E to the power minus T over RC. At that point, to remove this exponential term, you take the natural log of both sides. This removes the exponential. Now, this is because it, the opposite mathematical term 
term of E is natural log or ln. So ln and E cancel out with the power of E becoming the normal term in the equation. So what this means is, for example, if you had log E to the power minus 5x, that would cancel to be minus 5x. If you had log E to the 2, it would cancel through to equal 2. So if you had log E to the power minus t over RC, that then cancels to become minus t over RC. You would then rearrange the subject to make it to be t. So therefore you say minus t is equal to log q over q0 times by RC. You then remove the negative value for time and place it in the other side of the equation. So t is equal to minus log q over q0 times by RC. Now note, this is the same for any value, whether it's q, whether it's i, or whether it's v. So an example question could be as follows. Determine the time taken for the potential difference to fall to 45% of its original value if the resistance in the circuit is 20 kilo ohms and the capacitance of the capacitor is 45 nanofarads. So the first thing you do is you state the equation V equals V0 e to the power minus T over RC. You then, like in that same process before, make t the subject of your equation, because that is what you'd like to work out. Then what we'd say, if we want to work out 45% of the original value, v will become 0.45 and v0 will become 1. I mean, you could do 45 and 100, but it breaks down to the same values. You then pop in the value for r, which is 20 times 10 to 3, pop in the value for c, 45 times 10 to minus 9, and you work it through to get 7.2 times 10 to minus 4 four seconds. Now, capacitors will discharge exponentially. This means that their charge falls away in a similar way to a radioactive material decay. Now, in radioactivity, you have half-life, and in capacitance, you have something called time constant. Now, they are constant throughout, so it means in that particular time period, the value will decrease by that certain percentage in, in that particular time frame. So they're a constant of an exponential. Now, whilst the radioactive half-life is the time taken for the value to fall by 50%, the capacitance time constant is the time taken for the value to fall by 63%. So they're very, very, very similar, except one is the rate of decrease by 50%, and one is a rate of decrease to 37%. Now, the two factors that affect the rate of charge and discharge are the resistance of the circuit and the capacitance of the capacitor, which allows us to work out the time constant of charge or discharge, T equals RC. Now, remember, the larger the resistance of the circuit, the capacitor is in, the longer it takes to charge or discharge. So this allows us to think about our equation looked at previously and to simplify it. So if the time of discharge was the time constant, the equation can simplify because we can say RC is equal to T. So now Q is equal to Q0 e to the minus T over T. So that becomes e to the minus 1. Now we can rearrange this and say Q over Q0 is equal to e to the minus 1 or 1 over over e. Now because we know e is 2 point is 2.718, 1 over 2.718, which is 1 over e, is 0.37. So this means that in one time constant, the value of charge falls to 37% of the value it had at the start of the time constant. Now it's important to note that this is a fixed value and is unchanging for a discharging capacitor. And this is the same principle for potential difference in current as they follow the same mathematics as charge. So this allows you to derive the time constant via graphical methods because on any discharging curve it's the time taken for the value to drop to 37 percent of the value it had at the start of the time constant um, me measuring period so what you do is you must find v0 or i0 or q0 from the graph and then calculate 37 percent of that value and find this time the value on the graph then find the time elapsed now note if you wanted to do further values you're going to have to find 37 percent of that original value. So for example, after you after it's dropped from 100% to 37%, the next part which you would measure will be 14% because that is 37% of 37%. And then finally, you do 0.05, which is 37% of 14%. 
Now, it's also a very similar process used to work out half-life of radioactive decay, except in this process you look for 37% of the original value, not 50%. So remember that for each time constant, the charge or potential difference or current drops by 37% of the starting value. This means the value decreases from 100% to 37% in one time constant, 37% to 14% in one time constant, and then 14% to 5% in one time constant. Now, when practice we say that the time taken for a capacitor to charge or discharge fully is taken to be five time constants. Now we can derive why the time constant is the time taken to drop to 37% of the starting value by considering the equations for charge and discharge. So like we mentioned before after one time constant T is equal to RC. So therefore we can simplify the equation to Q equals Q0 e to the minus 1. e to the minus 1 is 0 0.37 so therefore shows after one time constant the value is is 37% of its starting value. And we can also rearrange this equation to make time constant the subject of the equation. So once again, you collect the charge terms on one side, you then take the natural log of both sides to remove the exponential, and then you make RC the subject. So you get the equation RC is equal to minus T over log Q over Q0. Now this shows that you can create a log linear graph from the data to find the time constant. So if you plot a graph of log Q against time T, you will get a straight line. This proves exponentiality. And the great into the straight line will be 1 over RC, 1 over the time constant, whilst the y-intercept will be log Q0. So you can derive the time constant from graphical methods. So again, like we mentioned, if you plot the graph of log Q against time T, you will get a straight line and the gradient will be, my, will be minus 1 over RC, 1 over the time constant. Now it's the same if it's log V, it's the same if it's log I. Now we can also rearrange this equation to find the time T taken for the charge or the potential difference to half in a capacitor. So if we're trying to work out what the half value is, so we'd say Q equals a half Q0, that has gone to 50% of its original value, we can therefore rearrange it and say a half Q is equal to Q0 e to the power minus T over RC. Therefore, those Q zeros will cancel through, and you get a half equals e to the minus t over RC. We can then natural log both sides to then remove the exponential term. So now log a half is equal to minus t over RC. We then can remove this exponential term by doing uh, by taking the natural log, and then we can say log a half is equal to log 2, because we know log a half is equal to log 1 minus log 2, so log 1 is equal to 0, so therefore it's minus log 2, which will cancel through with that minus t over rc, to give us log 2 times by rc equals t. So therefore t, which is the time taken to half, is going to be log 2 times by rc, but we can simplify that log 2 to a value, Value, and we'll say it's 0.69 and this is the equation to work out the time taken for the charge on a, on a capacitor to half. So what have we learned in today's lesson? We know that the graphical representation of charging and discharging capacitors through resistors with corresponding graphs for Q, V and I against time for charging and discharging. We can interpret gradients and areas under graphs where appropriate. We know the time constant is equal to RC and we can calculate the time constant by two different graphical methods and we know the time taken to half is 0.69 times by RC, whilst you know the quanti quantitative treatment of capacitor discharge is equal to Q equals Q0 e to the minus T over RC, or the equivalent equations for V and I, and the qualitative treatment of capacitor charge is Q equals Q0 times by 1 minus e to the power minus t over rc. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can represent the charging and the discharging capacitors through resistors graphically, calculate values for current potential difference in charge for a discharging capacitor, and calculate the time constant for a charging or discharging capacitor. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the time constant and how capacitors charge and discharge, which is part of the capacitance topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening to today's lesson and have a lovely day.